objectives of this video is to define what to define what compaction is, to look at what the optimum moisture content is, um, and what the maximum dry unit weight is. I'm going to introduce you to two new equations, and then we're going to do an example. <clears throat> so, what is compaction? If we have a sample of soil, right? We know in our sample of soil we have solid soil particles, we have water, and we have pockets of air. Okay, so when we come and put a structure in this, if we don't compact it first, what's going to happen is that the structure is going to come and sit on this, and the air and the water are going to be squeezed out, okay, and the building is going to settle. And it's not a good thing because, say, for example, this side settles more than this side, we're going to get differential settlement, and the building is going to tilt like the leaning tower of Pisa, okay? So you often see um, steamrollers on building sites coming to compact the soil before they put any buildings on it, okay, or any structure. So what is compaction dependent on? Compaction is dependent on three things. The first thing it's dependent on is the water content, so how much water we have in our soil sample. The second thing it's dependent on is the type of soil. And the third thing it's dependent on is the amount of energy we put into the system. Okay, if we put more energy, we're gonna get a better um, bulk unit weight of soil. So what we're going to do now is see the relationship between the moisture content and the bulk unit, the uh, unit weight. So if we were to plot, so this is moisture content against gamma dry. It's very important to gamma dry. What's going to happen is, is that we're going to get a curve which looks something like this. Okay. So what it's saying is that at some particular point, we're going to get an optimum moisture content, which will give us an, a uh, maximum dry unit weight, which is what we want. We want the soil to be compacted to that um, dry unit weight. So if we think about it, this makes sense. If we were to increase the moisture content, um, we get the soil, if we think about an extreme level, the soil would become suspended in a in a liquid, in a, in a water. So it doesn't that obviously doesn't have any compressive strength. It can't take any stress. Um, on the other side, if we were to decrease the amount of moisture content, the soil would um, not exhibit sort of um, elements of plasticity, and it's not going to hold together nicely. It's going to be crumbly, um, and it's not going to be able to hold a lot of weight above it. So we have a point, which is the optimum moisture content, so the optimum amount of moisture in our soil sample, which is going to give us the best um, compressive stress, right? The, the best, the best strength. So another thing which we need to note is that. This curve is dependent on the amount of, comp of energy we put into the system. So this curve can shift. Okay. It's going to shift up and down, depending on how much energy we put on, um, where this line represents a certain level of saturation. Let's just say it's like 70%. Okay. And another important feature is that we get a point here. This line here is the no air voids line, NAV the no air voids line, whereby the saturation is 100% and we can never enter this region, okay? Think of this as like when your moisture content gets to 100%, it's like an asymptote, it's going to approach this value, okay? And it's going to obviously shift depending on how much energy we put into the system. Um, just, I need to introduce you to two more formulas and then we can do an example. Gamma bulk equals one plus the moisture content outside of gamma dry. Okay, and also the no air voids line is just when the saturation is 100%. You guys can go derive this in your own time. It's going to be the um, specific gravity times the gamma of water over the specific gravity times the moisture content plus one. Okay, so there's our formula for the, no air, the gamma of the no air voids line. Okay, so let's go and do an example. Say we're given this information, a moisture content of... Um, 7.2% 7, 7 against a gamma bulk. So this table shows moisture content against gamma bulk. We can go ahead and find the dry unit weight at any point, right? So we know that the dry unit weight, sorry, we know that gamma bulk equals one plus M outside of the dry unit weight which means that we can find the dry unit weight is equal to gamma bulk 
outside of one on top of one plus m. And the reason we're doing this is because our graph we just did to draw this graph, we need to find the dry unit weight against the moisture content. Okay. So doing this problem, let's just do it for the first one. So the dry unit weight at a moisture content of 7.2%, so it would be 18.4 on top of 1 plus 0 0.072. And if we were to calculate this, we would get, if you bear with me for one second, we would get 17.2, okay? So I've calculated all these values already, so I'm just gonna fill them in. You guys can do it in your own time. So just to show you, 18.4 on 1 plus 0 0.072, 7.2% moisture content equals 17.2. Just filling in all the rest of these values. And 17.1. Okay. Now let's we need to find the gamma of the no air voids line so we can graph that line as well. So we know that the gamma of the no air voids line is GS gamma W on top of GSM plus one. Okay, so let's say for our soil GS is 2.7. So the no air voids line at a moisture content, let's do the first one of 7.2% would equal 2.7 by 9.81 divided by 2.7 by the moisture content, which is 0 0.072 plus one. Okay, we would get that that value is 22.2, okay? So I can go ahead and put that up there. Once again, I've calculated all these values already, so I'm just gonna pop them in. Okay, and 18.0, okay? So now we're gonna use this information, the moisture contents, the dry unit weight, and the, um, the gamma of no air voids line to draw a graph to calculate the optimal moisture content as well as the, opt the, maximum, the maximum dry unit weight, okay? so. It's a good idea to sort of keep this graph to scale, just because we're going. To, the answer we're going to be using is going to be um, deduced from our graph. So, moisture content ranges from 17.2 to 17. Point, sorry, 7.2 to 7.4. So let's just mark out some points. So if I call this 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 16, 17, 18, 19. Okay, so this is the moisture content as a percent. On this axis, okay, we have values ranging from 18 to around, the biggest value we get is 22. So if I call this um, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, and I can call that 23, okay? And this is gamma dry. Okay, so there's our graph. We can go and plot all these points. So 7.2 against 17.2. 7.2 and 17.2 would be around there. 8.1 and 18.3. So 8.1 and 18.3. 10.2 and 19.1. 10.2, 19.1, 12.4, 19.0, 12.4, 19.0, 16.3, 19.0, okay, uh, 16.3 and 17.7, so 16.3 and 17.7, and 17.4 and 7.1, so 17. Point four is like just there. Okay, so if we were to connect this curve up, it would look something like this. Okay, I can also go ahead and plot the no air voids line. So 7.2 and 22.2. .2. So this is up here. Uh, I'm just going to plot in the points 8.1, 21.7, 8.1, 21.7. Ten point two, twenty point eight, ten point two, twenty point eight, um, twelve point four, nineteen point eight, twelve point four, nineteen point eight, sixteen point three, eighteen point four, sixteen point three, eighteen point four. So you can see we're starting to approach that asymptote. Seventeen point four, eigh
18 point okay so this line here which I'm going to draw in blue okay is the no air voids line so this region we can never get into it's impossible okay because it's fully saturated now based on this graph we can determine our optimum moisture content and our um, maximum dry unit weight so we would come to our graph we would see that that point there is roughly the maximum um, we would then get our ruler we drop a line down and across okay so we can discover that our this is our optimum moisture content and this is our gamma dry max okay so we find that our optimum moisture content is roughly 11 percent and our gamma dry max is roughly 19 point um, say 19.7 okay okay so this is a complete example of plotting the no air voids line the moisture content against the gamma dry and we've seen now how to find the optimum moisture content and the maximum dry unit weight hope that helps guys